uh, trouble here actually to be fair. Hey, here's one of your worst nightmares when you're following a waterfall down. <laughs> this is a real life scenario of uh, survival in the bush. Oh, I wonder what's coming up next. Just heading out now, I've probably got about another three and a half to four hours back to the car park. And there's several <clears throat> times along this journey where you've actually lost sight of the track. The first thing to do would be always uh, just don't panic. Um, it's probably a good opportunity just to sit down and take stock. If there's any questions, um, you know, please put them down in the comments. Um, pretty busy sort of a guy, but I would just it would just let me know that there are people actually watching this and getting some kind of value out of what I do. So we're heading down here, Makura Saddle, how amazing is that? Look honestly this is an amazing day, gosh if you're in the Tauruas and it was like this you'd be counting yourself absolutely blessed. So from Kaweka J uh, there's another sign saying Don Spur, and this is a track I've actually never been on. I mean it almost goes straight down to the car park where hopefully my car is still waiting for me. Uh, wilding pines. If you saw my Ben Lohman video you'll know that they've become a real issue in New Zealand. Yeah. This track gets a bit narrow. First time I've had this happen. Um, a little bit unsure on Don Spur which way to go. There was a Waratah a little bit further up. If you remember I came through that really heavy pine um, and the tracks kind of really disappeared. So look this is exactly what I was saying in an earlier video. So I've stopped, had a drink, settling down, having a think about it. Um, I'm checking my map. I can see where I'm heading. Um, it's just really making sure that I don't come to a point where I can't turn around and come back again. So I've come back to the last known route marker um, and amongst these wildling pines. I've pulled out my app. I can see the car park in the distance, so I mean it's a great clear day, so I've got some advantages here. So to the right is, it's not a very well defined uh, ridge line, but it's more of a ridge line than um, where I was heading down before. So I'm now going to go straight through. Very faint skid marks going down here. It's in the general direction that I want to head. Heading for the tree, just in case I keep slipping. bit of power trouble here actually to be fair. I thought the smart money was to sidle along to this edge and follow these pine trees. So I'm at the end of the uh, rock moraine or slide. Um, that was sketchy. I'm to be honest quite exhausted. I'm well off track now and so in this situation I've decided I'm going to carry on down here, down to the river, and then follow the river down, um, whatever that looks like, and um, I should come across a trail. So she's about an eight meter drop. Really, not much I can do along the side. So there's only one way about this, and that is to I've got a little bit of rope, lower that down as far as it can, and then just drop it, and then I'm going to try to sidle along here. You uh, slide off that. You're going to do an ankle or something worse, maybe break a bone. So what I did is I took my pack off, made sure I was secure. I looked over the edge and I could see, I could see I couldn't really scramble along the side. If I came up and over, I, came, I could come down these. So I've dropped the bag off by tying this very strong, it's like power cord. Um, onto my pack. I threw a rock over first to make sure that it was long enough otherwise I hit the shoelaces and so yeah 
this, this is a real life scenario of uh, survival in the bush. Oh, I wonder what's coming up next. And where there's one waterfall there's often two, so not as dangerous coming down but a bit tricky because I couldn't see through the flax. So once again, repeat the process and then I've come down this log here. I think the worst of it's over in terms of danger, now it's just a case of navigating my way out. Um, honestly if this wasn't so um, not what I was planning to do, this would be a beautiful uh, place to camp and stop. Just looked at my um, navigator, it would suggest that this side of the river is a little bit less steep, so I'm going to follow the river up on that side, and uh, all going well, I will actually come across a track that cuts across the river. Tell you what, this is more than just a track, this is an excavated road, not marked on my map or on the GPS. Oh, here's my little friends. Oh man, I am starting to get a little bit hungry. What's turned it, what was started out as, to be honest, quite an ordeal, has really turned in. Mmm, oh, this is just so good. It's really turned into a very pleasant little adventure. Tell you what, that is a welcome sight. Look at that. Back where we started. The responsible thing when you've been in a situation like this is to go to the closest hut and um, write your intentions. So I'm going to write in that outdoorsman Dave, or Dave from Hamilton, has um, made it out at uh, the time is quarter to two. Hey, so look, that's really me. Um, it's been four days of amazing adventure, this particular ordeal. Um, so what did we learn? Hey, look, um, you know, at some stage I've goofed it up, I've got it wrong. Um, there was that Waratard that I showed you, that um, whether or not that was misplaced, um, very misleading. So just to show how easy it is to get in trouble in the outdoors. It's incredibly empowering being able to come into the wild and um, just navigate your way through these sort of difficulties. So thank you so much guys for watching. This has really been a completely different uh, video. And uh, please, if you haven't already, click subscribe and like and I'll catch you on the next trip.